Herb, I think I'm going to write Beekman a letter. You're going to ask him a question? No, I'm just looking for a pen pal. Don't you mean a penguin pal? <laughs> Get it? Get what? Get the remote and turn on the TV. Got it. Fact! The length of the wings of a jumbo jet is 196 feet. Longer than the Wright brothers' first flight. Wow, that's amazing. I'm Beekman, and you've just broken into Beekman's World. Beekman! <laughs> yeah, I was up in Canada studying the nesting habits of ducks. Uh, just how close were you with the little quackers anyway, huh? <laughs> well, I, I hate to duck out of this conversation, uh -huh. but we have some letters to answer. Oh, wow. good. Lay one on me, will you, Josie? Okay. Uh, uh Burr Risen from Burlington Hills, Michigan, wants to know, you're me. Why do the leaves in my backyard change color? Aha. Uh -huh. You see, Bert has done what we in science call... An empirical study. That means he's gone out and observed something for himself. Why do leaves change color? Hey, don't ask me. You're the scientist. Oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot. Wow, will my mom be proud. Yeah. That a boy. See, in the fall, leaves turn to yellow and red or orange, but they don't really change color. Oh, big baby logic check. They turn color, but they don't change color? Then what do they do? Well, they lose a color. Green. I lose green every time I go to the track. Come on, come with me. I'll show you. You too, Bert. Josie, I need the... Red? The Pogoscope. <laughs> Thanks. Here's a garden variety maple leaf. Now, a maple leaf has lots of colors. Red, yellow, orange. But the one we see the most is green. That's because the leaf is mostly full of a green chemical called chlorophyll. In the fall, the leaf runs out of chlorophyll. The green color goes away, and we see the other colors that were there the whole time. Well, there you go. Another question successfully answered. Hey, what do you say we hit the beach, huh? <laughs> Hello. Oh, hi. oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, it's Burr Rising again from Farmington Hills, Michigan. The one who wrote the letter. He wants to know what's chlorophyll doing in the leaf in the first place. The leaf uses the chlorophyll to feed the tree. Here's how. The tree takes water from the ground and the gas carbon dioxide from the air, and the tree mixes the two together with the energy of sunlight to produce food for the tree. We call this process photosynthesis. Photo from the Greek word for light, as in sunlight. And synthesis, which means to make stuff. Oh, 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 oh so the leaf is kind of like a little kitchen for the tree. Well, Josie, that's a perfect way to describe it. I whispered it in her ear. And now, it's time for Cooking with Chlora. Here's your host, Flora Phil. Hello there. Does your tree say I'm so hungry I could eat a lumberjack? Here's a recipe sure to keep your tree coming back for seconds. Because today, we're going to make food for a tree. Ooh. 
as the saplings say, let's get cooking. First, we'll take a generous serving of water. Oh, no, it's too generous. Uh, then add a heaping, telping, heaping of, <laughs> of carbon dioxide. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. And now, just a dollop of nature's special formula, chlorophyll. Uh, good. Now, we'll cook it in some sunlight. Good. There. Now, we're going to taste it. This is the part I like best. Oh, yeah. Needs just a pinch more sunlight. Needs just a pinch more sunlight. Uh, could I have the sunlight, please? <laughs> So marvelous on a Ritz cracker. Ah, there you go. Bon appetit. <coughs> <laughs> that brings up an interesting philosophical question. If a tree burps in the forest, does it make a sound? We'll answer that next time on Cooking with Claw. <coughs> Here is another interesting fact. While the leaf makes food for the tree, it gives off the oxygen we need to live. And then when we breathe out, we breathe out the carbon dioxide the tree needs to live. So trees not only give us fruit and shade and something fun to climb, they also give us air to breathe. Thank you. Thank you, tree. No, thank you. No, thank you. No, no, thank you. Coming up next. <laughs> Don't go away. Beekman's world will be right back. And now, back to Beekman's world. Try a little to the right, Don. Okay. How's this? No, it's still snowy. Well, what do you expect? We're in Antarctica. Oh, right. Perfect. Prepare yourselves. It's time to nudge your noggin. Here he is, the Duke of Data. The Squire Scholarship, the Emir of the Enigmatic, the one, the only, the Beekman. You hike them, I'll spike them, let's roll them. Question, you're Beekman, what's the longest snake? <laughs> My agent. No, Lester. Your agent has been a snake the longest, but the longest snake is the anaconda, which can measure up to 30 feet long. The shortest snake, by the way. Now we're talking about my agent. Uh, he's only about five foot three. Wrong. It's the thread snake. It's only about as long as your hand. Ooh. Well, snakes are kind of gross. Then we'll get onto a more pleasant subject. Worms. Did you know that a bootlace worm can grow to over 200 feet long? That's as tall as a 20-story building. Uh, to tell you the truth, Beekman, I really don't dig worms. Then you can buy them in a little carton. Snakes, Ugh, worms, I'm serious, Beekman. If you keep this up, it's gonna be see you later, alligator. Do you realize that there are about one million alligators in the United States and not one of them can walk backwards? Yeah, but, uh, do they eat rats? Alligators? <laughs> I was afraid of that. Can we talk about something that's not scary or disgusting? If you insist. Did you know that the Texas horned lizard can actually squirt blood from the corners of its eyes? Oh, but that's only if you step on it, right? Wrong. It does it on its own whenever it gets upset. What would make a horned lizard upset, anyway? Hmm. People who don't say thank you. Give me more. People who cut in front of line. Get out of the way. Discourteous drivers. People who smoke in elevators. <laughs> people who bring 11 items to the 10 items or less counter at the market. People who... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Lost my focus for a nanosecond. Those are the things that make me upset. 
Next question. Oh, now here's a question that won't have a disgusting answer. It sounds so French, so romantic. So, how can I say it? Exotique. What are escargot? Escargot are snails cooked in garlic and butter. Oh, gross. <laughs> That's not the gross part. They cost 15 bucks an order, and you gotta give the shells back. Now back to our shell answer, man. Actually, escargot are delicious, <laughs> but some people prefer fast food. And of course, all foods are faster than snails. Except maybe vegetables, like truffles. Oh, yum. Now truffles sound delicious. Truffles are delicious, mostly because they're fungus that pigs dig up. Fungus that pigs dig up? They cost almost as much as caviar. And what is caviar again? little raw fish eggs. Ah! But they taste great. And they're less filling. Bateman, can you please tell me something that's not scary or slimy or disgusting? How about that you are a great assistant? Now that's disgusting. I'll tell you what's disgusting. What? When you're just about to plant a big smooch on your date. Yeah. And she's got a piece of kelp stuck in her beak. Yuck, what a turnoff. Now that's disgusting. Coming up next. What's black and white and recycled all over? Old episodes of Mr. Ed. Even better. Stay tuned and we'll show you how to save lots of money and lots of trees. <laughs> this is disgusting. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Beatman's world will be right back. And now, back to Beatman's world. <laughs> Beatman! Beatman! Yes? I just read the news about your accident. Uh -huh. Are you okay? And if you're not okay, can I have all your stuff? Eh, just a few paper cuts, but thanks for asking. I guess you could say I have pay-per-view. Pay-per-view, pay-per-view. Yeah, he's okay. We're the ones in pain. You know, Beak? What? A lot of our viewers have been writing in wanting news about paper. Huh. Namely, how do you recycle it? Ah, ha! A question for the 90s and beyond. Of course, we know that all paper is made from... <laughs> cellulose. We get cellulose by cutting down and grinding up trees. This is a cord of wood. Four feet by four feet by... Eight feet. Now, this cord of wood can only produce 250 Sunday newspapers. That's all? Ah! Afraid so, Josie. That's why we all got to recycle. Um, I'm not sure I know what recycling is. Recycling is using something more than once instead of throwing it out. Right like aluminum cans. Or the kind of water you use in most car washes. Or the water in those big fountains. Or when you throw out your clothes. And you give them to someone else. Now do you understand? Oh, I knew that. I knew all that. I was just testing the kid. Let's recycle some paper. Yeah, let's save the life of a tree. Because that's what you do when you recycle paper. Remember, if you try any of our experiments, do them with an adult, and exactly the way we do them, taking all safety precautions. Okay? Okay. And I hope everyone has a pencil and some recycled paper to write on, because now we're going to learn how to recycle at home. All you need is a newspaper, a wire coat hanger, an old pair of pantyhose. Oh. Better check to make sure nobody's in them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, a food processor, white glue, and permission and help from your family. You're throwing in everything but the kitchen sink. Oh, that's right. Thanks for reminding me. I forgot. You also need the kitchen sink. Yeah. All those things. Let's 
Let's do it. First, you need to tear one full page of newspaper into strips like this. That's it. Don't tear them off like that because it won't work. Very good. And then tear those strips into tiny squares. Tiny squares, and we'll put them in there. Okay. Now, put the pieces of paper inside of the food processor. Add one cup of water. Now, if it gets too thick, add some more water. And you might want to try and get some good old length for some texture. Put the cap on. Lock it. Now, uh, you need a grown-up type person to turn it on. <laughs> You'll need about three minutes on the food processor to get the material in there to turn into disgusting gray gunk. Disgusting gray gunk? That was my nickname in high school. In the meantime, undo the coat hanger and make a square. Please be very, very careful. Now, twist it on the side of the square in the middle, not on the corners so the form won't break. Please, be very careful. Put tape around the middle of the side of the square. Next, stretch the pantyhose over the wire frame like this. Here we go. <laughs> then, what you do is tie knots in the ends right there. You clip off the rest of the pantyhose here, and you can use whatever's left over to make another square. You'll need one of these squares for each piece of paper you want to make. Okay, put a stopper on the sink and pour the gray gunk in. Uh, so you can see us do it, we're going to use this clear plastic bowl instead of a sink. Next, you add three inches of water. Lovely. And two spoonfuls of white glue. There's one and two. And mix it up, stir it up. Okay, now you really have to do a good job to get your hands in there. Yeah, that's right. Ooh, this is disgusting. I love it. Now mix it up some more, mix it up really well. And take your square, put it into your sink on the sides like this. Slide it down the sides so it's flat on the bottom. Then lift it out very slowly, very slowly. Counting to 20 will help, or else there won't be enough material on the nylon. The paper will be too thin. When you get to the top, uh, there we go. Let the water drip out for a whole minute. Just hang your square in the sun until it's completely dry. Now remember, the tiniest bit of moisture will wreck your paper. So please, be very, very patient. And you can use things other than pantyhose to make your paper, like cheesecloth. Cheesecloth? Now you're talking. Peel your paper off the pantyhose frame slowly and carefully. And there it is, a sheet of your own homemade, handmade paper. Recyclorama. Now, you can cut your paper or you can draw a picture on it. Or you can even write a letter on it. It's just like real paper. In fact, it's better than real paper. It's recycled paper. Hey, you know, I have a feeling you could have done this all by yourself, Josie. I could have. But then it'd be called Josie's World, wouldn't it? Although it does have a nice ring to it. Well, time to wrap things up. Ah, I will. And when I do, I'll do it in recycled paper. It beats those recycled jokes he's been using. Everyone, please get a sheet of paper. Because in just a minute, I'm going to show you something you absolutely cannot do with paper. You simply won't believe your eyes. Stay tuned. Beatman's World will be right back. And now, back to Beatman's World. If you have a question about how the oil works, just write to us at Beekman's Oil, P.O. Box 30087, Kansas City, Missouri, zip code 64112. And those guys will do their best to find you an answer. The thing 
that you absolutely, positively cannot do with a sheet of paper is fold it more than nine times. Yeah, I know it sounds strange, but come on, let's try it. Let's try it, okay? One, you with me? Okay. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine. I'm stuck. Oh, me too. Hey, so am I, and so is everybody out there. But hey, at least we're stuck together. Oh, joy. See, if you keep doubling the thickness of something, pretty soon it's thicker than it is wide, and you can't fold it anymore. By the time you try folding the paper for the tenth fold, you're attempting to fold more than 500 layers of paper, or an entire ream. <laughs> it's all about geometry. It's all about science. Hey, it's all about fun. And you can do it. Ooh, this is a good one to play on your friends. Join us again next time on Beekman's World. Very cool. The show? Oh, yeah, it's cool. But I was talking about the weather. Oh. Yeah.